at the farthest position back here, I like to do an external rotation. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're, create you're, a little external rotation. All right, well, Gary's getting a little here. fancy on me now. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? Gary Walker here and Mark McKillier with Live Anabolic. Mark came down to Lubbock to join me for a couple videos. And today we've got a really cool video for you guys. This is all about warming up, how to warm up properly. Whether that be doing high intensity interval training, warming up prior to doing weight training. <laughs> I know a lot of your guys, Mark, are doing a lot of home-based stuff, yeah, a lot oh, of high-intensity yeah. training with body weight. Mm -hmm. So what are you telling your guys as far as the proper way to warm up? Okay, so the reason I wanted to shoot this video with Gary today is because I get this question asked all the time. All right, so on Facebook, via email, I mean, it just, I mean, even Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, I'm getting, you guys are sending me these questions. So. The, the thing is, there's two types of workouts that he just mentioned. So one of them is kind of like a cardio only workout. We're not going to be lifting weights. We're not going to be doing any resistance training. So there's a way to warm up for that kind of an exercise uh, program. And then we got the resistance training where we're going to be, you know, really straining right. and pushing those muscles hard. And then we're going to show you how to warm up for that type of a program. So the first one is a cardio. So you're at home. We're going to be doing, say, one of my circuit training hit routines. And so I don't want you guys to just start the program, all right? Don't just start killing yourself doing, doing one of these high intensity interval trains. You gotta warm up. Now, the, the thing, and Gary's gonna jump in here in a second, is there's, there's a difference between warming up and stretching, all right? So everybody's heard about stretching for decades, right? right. Well, guys, really stretching is not nearly as important as warming up your body, warming up the muscles. So if you don't have time, skip the stretching, okay? And just do the warm up. So how do you warm up to get ready for a cardio routine? Well, there's lots of different ways and it depends on you. I mean, do you have bad knees? Do you have bad shoulders? Do you have a bad back? <laughs> okay. So Gary and I are gonna give you a bunch of different, right. different ways. All right, right so right. you start off, what is one of your kind of favorite, the easiest first ways? thing you wanna do prior to active, you know, getting active with all these exercises is make sure you get some blood flow going. If you're gonna be doing some jump squats, if you're gonna be doing some body weight squats, anything like that, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you've got blood in your quads, you're opening up your hips. So I know where we're talking about stretching isn't as important, but a lot of that depends on what you're actually working as well. If you're doing a lot of lower body movement, you do want to make sure your glutes are stretched. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mark will show you some of these stretches here in a minute. <laughs> yeah, and you also want to make sure your hip flexors. Those are two of the more important muscles you really want to make sure that they are loose and warm prior to just going straight into an actual workout, especially if you're doing a type of HIIT workout that Mark recommends. So mm -hmm. these are high intensity interval training sessions designed to get you really good benefits. At the end of the day, you're gonna get great results, but you need to make sure you're prepared to do them correctly because you don't want an injury that's gonna set you back. So, All right, so some, some ex simple examples, okay, would be jumping jacks. Right. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than jumping jacks, guys. So I'm not gonna show you how to do a jumping jack, all right? I don't wanna insult <laughs> your, out of the way. I don't wanna insult your <laughs> feelings. Um, but everybody knows how to do them, but what happens if you can't? And, and I do, I don't know if you have guys oh, yeah. telling you. Lateral issues with the knees. Okay. The outer movements are a little bit more difficult for those guys. Okay, so a lot of times if you can't do it, it's because of your knees. Mm -hmm. So here, let's pull this out of the way real quick. I'm gonna show you guys a really good <laughs> cardio exercise that you can do that puts no stress on your knees. Okay, so I've shot some videos talking about this before, but, but this, is, this is a much more encompassing warm up exercise. So guys, mountain climbers, do not hurt anybody's knees. All right, so there's there's a couple of ways to do them. And, and if you're just starting off, okay, and you got a bunch of weight to lose, I realize this might be kind of tough, but I'm doing a plank right now, all right? So you can do mountain climbers real slow like this, all right, as you're getting used to it. Now guys, you do this for about 60 seconds, and I promise you're gonna get out of breath. <laughs> it's because you have to engage your core while you're doing this, all right? But I really want to try to get your heart rate up and get that blood pumping, okay? So if we can pick up the speed here, okay, a little bit quicker, all right? You get used to this, and I, and I know if you've never done these, it's going to feel weird, okay? But I promised after just a little practice, you're going to get that kind of balance in the mind-muscle connections going, and you're going to be able to start really picking up 
the speed on those mountain climbers. Now we're working. All right, so if you see, as you just kind of speed things up, it goes from just a real gentle little exercise into an all out sprint. So basically, when I'm down there sprinting like that, it's identical to doing high knees or running in place. I'm just doing it horizontal instead of vertical, okay? Yeah, a lot less impactful on your knees as well. That's a Zero, huge so zero impact on your knees. So that's one good way. You wanna show them some other yeah. ways to kind of- A couple of things, if you don't have any knee issues, like you're doing with the jogging in place, mm -hmm. sprinting in place, that's another way to really get your heart rate going, get some blood flow moving throughout your body. You can also do what I call phantom jump ropes or air jump ropes. You don't actually need a jump rope. You're just sitting here going through the motions. The cool thing about this, you can actually get wider as you get into these to loosen up your shoulders a little bit. You're loosening up your legs, your hips, your calves, your shoulders. If you do that prior to the actual workout, because that's the other thing. When you have the workout, you never want to just jump right into the workout and start even counting what we're doing right now <laughs> as part of your workout. I know some of you guys are doing that. That's one thing I've noticed. Yeah. So this isn't a part of the actual workout, the prescription workout that you have. This is what you do prior to that. It's just preventive maintenance, trying to get everything loose, trying to get blood going into the right muscles, trying to get the synovial fluid in your I joints. Actually, uh, absolutely, and that's gonna give you great benefits and it's gonna make your workout even better. So you guys, the next question is, well Mark, how, how long do I do this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well it depends. Now for me, it takes me a long time to warm up, guys. Uh, I've found that I actually get a second wind. So if I, if I really started working out hard as far as cardio, I'm gonna get winded, I'm just gonna be exhausted. <laughs> but if I take my time and warm up and kind of get out of breath three, four, five times before I start, I have way more endurance when the actual hardcore workout kicks in. And I don't know if you get that kind of second wind mentality. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it makes a big difference. And this is just part of the warm up. Like we mentioned earlier, you'd still wanna do a little bit of stretching if you have time. Not a lot, but if yeah. you're gonna be working a lot of lower body stuff. Okay, so I wanna, get, I wanna show you a few things I like to do yeah, let me uh, as far as stretching. And, and this applies not just for cardio or HIIT type stuff, but it also applies if you're doing resistance training for like your legs, okay? So on leg day, okay, before I do this, I'm gonna get on the bicycle, okay? Cause I'm, I'll be at the gym. So I'll be on that bicycle for five or 10 minutes and I'll kind of get that blood flowing. Right. And, and I'll feel a pump in my quads. But now I want to stretch out my lower body here. And this is, I'm, I'm not going to do the entire length, okay? But I'll, I'll stretch out by doing, I'm pushing my knee forwards and I'm really feeling it right down here right. in my hips, okay? So my hip flexors are getting stretched. And, I, and of course you got to do both sides, guys and I'll push and I'll hold it for about 20 seconds on each side, all right? So I do this first. The second thing I do is roll over on my side and I put my foot under my knee and I pull down. And at the same time, I'm holding my offside shoulder and arm on the ground and I'm pulling and you're gonna feel, a, oh man, a big stretch right <laughs> here in your glutes, all right? Not so much in your hamstrings, but way up here in your butt, okay? and you're gonna feel your back, it feels great. So I'm twisting my back here, guys, and it really feels good, and you just rock over. And I like to hold it for about 20 seconds on both sides, okay? Now I sit up. down there real quick. Hold on, I'm gonna show them one more thing. Okay, all right. I, I don't wanna neglect the glutes too much. Okay. One of the issues I get with a lot of older guys, I'm sure you do mm -hmm. as well, is low back issues. A lot of people just automatically assume they've got a weak low back. A lot of that is tied to your glutes being too tight. Mm -hmm. Glutes and hip flexors, you did your yep. hip flexor stretch. Go ahead and cross your leg over again like you uh -huh. did initially. Grab back here, we're gonna stretch that bottom glute. Now pull that, this. there you go. Pull, there you go. You'll get a glute stretch, you feel it in this leg? Oh yeah, I'm feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna get a really good glute stretch. Again, 20 to 30 seconds, hold this. Yep. He'll switch legs yep. and you'll stretch the other glute. And then, I yeah. actually like doing 20 seconds each side and I'll do three rounds of okay. that. 20 seconds, 20 seconds, and just go back and forth for three rounds. So guys, if you're stretching for two minutes, you ain't, it, that ain't happening, right? <laughs> right. Because as he said, 20, 20 seconds a side, 
that's already 40 seconds. Right. And then he says three rounds of that, and that's just for one particular stretch. Right. Okay, so then I'll sit up, and I'll get my groin here, do a little butterfly here, and I'm feeling it in here. And I'll hold this for 20 seconds. All right, this is another stretch. It's real simple, guys. I'll start on my toes, and I sink back into my knees, okay? And I come down to my head is near the ground, and I'm, I'm reaching out with my fingers. And I'm feeling a great stretch in my back, okay? My lats, my shoulders feel great. And I'm, my lower back is also stretching out. Now, to, to go deeper, after I hold this for about 20 seconds, I'll straighten my toes out. Now I can sit down all the way. My butt's all the way down on my knees. <laughs> and now I'm stretching out my back and the shoulders are feeling great now. And I come over here and I try to touch my nose to my knee. And I do it to the other side. And when I do that, I'm feeling, it's not just in your lower back and your butt and your legs, it's, it's really all your upper back, your lats are stretching right. out. It feels fantastic in your shoulders, guys. And then finally, all right, once again, this is for hips, okay? So I'll come down, I, I sit up in this position right here, and I'm bringing my chest down to my knee. And this feels great. Now I'm getting my glutes here too, guys. I can feel it. You're gonna feel it in your groin and back here, all right? So 20 seconds on this side, and of course I just switch over. Okay, set up in this position. I try to bring my chest down here. And if you can't come this, you know, you can start off back here if you're not as flexible. But as you get more and more flexibility, you can come and bring your head more towards the front of your body and try to come all the way down as deep as you can. And you're gonna feel it in your groin, in your glutes, in your lower back. And guys, I'll do this. I'll probably spend six or seven minutes doing this. Then I get up uh, yeah. <laughs> and now I'm ready to start my leg workout. And that's a whole different workout, or, or excuse me, that's a whole different warm up that I do before my actual leg workout. Okay, Mark just went over a lot of the lower body stretching and types of warm ups that we recommend. Now we're gonna get into some upper body stuff. A lot of upper body work actually requires a lot of shoulder work. Oh yeah. <laughs> Chest work. Anytime you're doing chest, you're working your shoulders. Anytime you do shoulders, you're obviously working your shoulders. Even back work. A lot of people neglect warming up, warming up their shoulders when they're working their back. However, your shoulder is constantly moving with all of those exercises. So one of the things I like to do is mobility work first. Okay. I will do some shoulder mobility exercises. I'm gonna show you the three that I recommend. And then we get into some acclimation sets. So we'll do acclimation sets leading up to a working exercise. So we'll explain that here in a minute. Yep. All right, the three I like to use, the very first ones are banded pull-aparts. This is just a standard resistance band, all right? So typically what I like to do, thumbs up and out, and I will put my hands right outside of my hips. And you're just gonna pull this right across the upper chest, 12 to 15 times, all right? You're gonna do this 12 to 15 times, at the back here, try to squeeze those shoulder blades together. This is gonna also drive some blood into the shoulder joints. So, which is the other key that you wanna focus on, like we mentioned with the lower body stuff. All right, that's the first exercise I do. And then I will do over and back. This time you have an overhand grip, pretty much the same width. Make sure you're using a thinner band. Some of these really thick bands just add tough. a whole lot of resistance. <laughs> you don't want this to be an actual workout when you're doing this. This is a warm up. So basically what we're gonna do here, all the way over, down, and back over again. So this is an over and back. You done any of these, Mark? Not in a long time. And you know what? I see people doing this sometimes with like a rod, okay? Definitely. But it, but it won't stretch. Right. So it doesn't give. That keeps you in a fixed position. Uh-huh. The other benefit to this is you are activating your delts. Okay. You're pulling them apart, yeah. which is going to get those primed and ready for your actual exercise. So I really like the bands a lot more than using like a broomstick, okay? Right. Especially as we get older. These young guys can do the broomstick and they just, <laughs> they just go back and forth. <laughs> Make it right? look easy. But these bands, as you go over, if, if your arms won't go back, you can pull the bands apart and then it will go over, okay? So your body will naturally take care of your shoulder problem. And, right. 
And one thing, guys, I think uh, the shoulder joint is the most flexible joint in your body. I mean, you know, just about 360 degrees in, in multiple planes, but it's also like one of the weakest joints in your body because of how flexible it is. So if you guys have bad shoulders, you really need to listen to some of the stuff Gary's gonna show you here in just a second. Yeah, so the other benefit like we're talking about is we're warming up, we're driving blood in there, we're working them slightly with the resistance that the band adds. All right, so we've got the first two out of the way. The third is a face pull. You can do those on a cable machine or you could just do them on a band, with a band. Just loop this around a cable or wherever you're working out, just loop it around something. Mm -hmm. And what I like to do here, face pull, we're basically keeping the elbows out and up. At the farthest position back here, I like to do an external rotation. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're, create you're, a little external rotation. Right, well, Gary's getting a little here. fancy on me now. <laughs> no, if you just create that little external rotation there, uh -huh. it actually is going to activate the rear delts as well. You're working the rear delts, medial delts. Again, not enough to simulate a workout, not to over stress it, yeah. but to warm it up, the blood flow, activate the muscles, yeah. and really focus on working those joints. These are like baby sets. I, yes. like, to, I, I like to use that term baby, <laughs> baby weight, baby well, bands. This is a baby band, check this dude yeah, out. Yeah, it's little. Not a whole lot here. And again, when you're warming up with bands, that is going to be the key. Yeah. Because the thicker the band, the greater the resistance. So you don't, once again, need a lot of resistance. It's the mobility we're working on. And, and another thing, guys, is because everybody's so, so different out there, okay? Some of you guys have got great shoulders, okay? And it, it's not gonna take you as long to warm them up, okay? I have pretty good shoulders. It's my legs. Now, my knees don't kill me, but it takes me forever to warm up my lower body before I do a hardcore leg day. Right. And let me tell you, I, I do tons and tons of warm-ups, all right? That's just the way I am, okay? I know other guys that don't need to do nearly as much warm-up as I do. So you need to experiment, and I guarantee you, you guys are not doing enough warm-ups. Absolutely. Before I get into the acclimation, Seth, you led me to another point. Mm -hmm. We're talking about warming up the knees. I know we touched on the lower body already, but mm -hmm. that leads me to some deload stuff. Okay. If you're doing goblet squats, if you're gonna do back squats, or like you're talking about when you do leg press, yep. you start with one plate, even though you're gonna work with five. Yep. So that is the acclimation sets. However, a lot of you guys have such bad knees, we really need to deload those first. We need to create a little separation in the knees. Okay. So a couple ways to do that. One, if you have a cable, you can offset your own weight with a rope. Here we're at 70 pounds. So you wanna simulate a squat. Anytime you're doing a squat, you wanna get that hip hinge. Okay. Basically meaning getting your glutes back. You never wanna just drop straight down into a squat, especially if you have bad knees. And if you don't have bad knees, that will lead to bad knees. <laughs> so you actually want to get the hips back first. Once you're coming back, then you drop down. If you can't support your own body weight initially, that's where these come from. Yep. All right, that's where these benefit you. You actually come back down. You're deloading. Take it as deep as you can. I understand not everybody can go this deep. Yep. But even if it's here, that's good enough to start. And you're not using your full body weight to, to lift. You're actually just offsetting. Here I've got 70 pounds. You can start with 100 if you need to. Do this. Go to 50 pounds. Do a little bit more of your normal weight. All right, if you're needing to deload your knees but you don't have access to a cable, all you have to do is just grab onto something here for support and just offset your weight with it. You still get your hips back, still drop into your squat, and you can use your arms to help you come up. And basically what I recommend is about 20 reps here. 20 reps to get some blood flowing in the quads, mm -hmm. to open up your knees. Again, get synovial fluid in your knee joints. And so guys, remember, listen to your body. So now Gary's got great flexibility. His knees aren't killing him when he goes that deep. So if you can't go all the way down, go as far as you can right. and knock out five, six, seven reps. Now guess what? After you do that, your knees are gonna start to loosen up and then you might be able to go a little deeper on the next five or six, all right? They feel a little better, then the next five or six go even deeper. So you really can make your knees feel better and get used to this as you progress. And, and Gary and I were talking about this off camera a little while ago. And, and both of us have had tons of clients call us and tell us after say three months yeah. of working out that their knees have gotten remarkably better. They said, you know, beginning, I can't do squats, I can't do jumping jacks, everything hurts. Three months later, 
Now their knees aren't perfect, they're not 20 year old knees anymore, but still, they've, you know, guys are saying that they feel 30 years younger as far as their knees are concerned. So you have to push yourself, all right? So if it hurts a little bit, I don't care, all right? <laughs> all right, yeah, all right. So you need to be able to put up with a little bit of pain. Now, I don't want it to be debilitating pain, right? but if after you do this, several hours later, if your knees aren't hurting, that means that you didn't damage your knees, okay? So if you're just experiencing a little bit of discomfort, a little bit of pain during the workouts, stick with it, okay? If your knees hurt the next day, that means you actually injured them. Right. So you need to adjust your workouts, okay? But if it doesn't get worse, it means everything's okay. Absolutely. Now we're gonna talk about some acclimation sets. So, and they don't know what an acclimation set uh, is. Yeah, we're about to break it down for you. <laughs> okay. All right, here's the thing. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna demonstrate with a bench press, dumbbell bench press. But as Mark was telling me earlier, when he starts with leg press, he's gonna be working with five plates on each side. Mm -hmm. And to, before he starts with his working set, he starts with one plate and that's your first warm up. So that's literally just 20% of the weight that I'm eventually gonna be using. Right. So that's how light, that's how baby I go when I start warming up. And I have to do that, especially with my legs. Now I do that with every other muscle group. Shoulders, chest, biceps. Right. Certain things in my body hurt more than other things. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And it just takes more of these acclimation, these baby warm-up sets for me to be able to do certain workouts. You guys need to figure out what hurts the most on you <laughs> and do a lot of acclimation sets. Right, absolutely. And they are very important, but here's the thing. They aren't a part of the working sets. So if you're supposed to be doing three sets of 10 to 12 reps, these aren't a part of those three sets. Doesn't count, guys. These are not working <laughs> sets. So are... even if it takes you four or five of these, if it, that's how long it takes your body to get warmed up, then that's just added to that. Added to your yeah, normal workout. Yeah, added to your normal workout. But basically, if you're doing a bunch of uh, chest and shoulders and triceps in the same workout, mm -hmm. you've only got to really warm up with that first one. That's right. the other thing I want to point out because if you got yeah. four or five exercises, you don't need to do this type of acclimation warm up for all of them. It's just at the very beginning of the very first exercise you're doing that day. That's it. Right. From then on, your body is ready to go. Absolutely. You want me to show them some acclimation sure. sets? Sure. All right, Here we're is. starting with bench press. Or apparently we're starting with incline. Absolutely. Bench press. All right, so let me grab, if I'm gonna be doing incline, I'm gonna say three sets of 10 to 12. Question, yes. Okay, so tell them real quick. Right. What what weight are you gonna really work up to? What's what's your kicking ass weight? Okay, if I'm doing eight to 10 or 10 to 12, or probably 80 pound dumbbells. So that's how much he's ultimately gonna be using in his real workout. Right. So what are you gonna start off with? Though? I'm gonna start off with 30s with his acclimation yeah, warm-up sets. 30 pounds. Okay. Here's the other thing I'll point out while I'm doing these. I'll start out with 30s. And I like to take these slow, so make sure you're keeping it all slow because the key with these are just warm-ups. And not just warming up my chest, warming up my shoulders. I like to keep my elbows a little wider during the warm-ups. As the weight gets heavier, I tuck them a little bit more. It's a little safer for the shoulders. Okay. But I like to really get a good stretch with the lighter weights. And again, I will get a full contraction at the top. Bring them out nice and wide. The other key point when you're doing warm-ups, my very first warm-up with the lightest weight, I'll shoot for about 10 to 12 reps. After that, you want to go down considerably. You don't want to do 10 to 12 reps with three or four acclimation sets because you're going to be way too fatigued. Mm -hmm. All right, beyond that point. All right, so let me just do one more here for demonstration. All right, there's my 30s. So from here, I like to do a two 10 pound jumps. He's gonna go to 40s. I'll go to 40s. Now you don't have to jump Not into it right now. He's just doing it because we're shooting a video. You might wanna rest a minute in between warmups. Yeah, absolutely. This is all for video right here. <laughs> all right, so now what I will do with the second one is shoot for five reps. We're still not very heavy, but I'm still getting a really good stretch. Stretch, and the other thing I like to do is visualize the full range of motion here. Visualize my chest stretching and contracting at the top. So this is where I get that mind-muscle connection going. Really pay attention to working the actual muscles as opposed to just driving weights yeah. up so, and down. And so guys, y'all have heard me talk about mind-muscle connection a whole lot also. 
And there's a lot to that. Um, it's not just pushing the weight up. If you can train your brain to really focus on the muscles that you're working, you'll be able to lift a heavier weight. Absolutely. And the heavier weight you lift, the more damage you're gonna to do to your muscle fibers, and that's what we're looking for, damage, because the more damage, the more your body repairs and overcompensates, and the more the muscle grows. Right. And so the other thing is the central nervous system. You wanna yes. talk a little bit about how that kicks in too. Yeah, absolutely. The, when you actually go heavier, that's when you stimulate your central nervous system. One of the things I like to do with my third acclimation set, since I do go a little bit heavier, 70s are a little bit heavier for some of the older guys. Mm -hmm. So probably I did the 30s, the 40s, this 50 I'm gonna be doing next. I like to lift explosively. Okay. Nice and slow on the way down, explode it up for three reps. My third acclimation, three reps, explosive. That helps turn on that central nervous system get all of the fibers in the chest firing. So we're working every bit of the chest. Okay, sounds right. great. Now, guys, this is not just a chest acclimation warm-up that we're right. showing you. This applies to any muscle group. Now, I have found, at least with me, the bigger the muscle group, the more oh, yeah. warm-up sets I need. Right. Um, if I'm doing a shoulder workout, I typically can get my shoulders kind of loose and ready to go after about three, yeah. you know, light acclimation sets. They feel pretty good. Um, biceps is a small muscle group, but I have tendonitis in my right bicep. And so it takes me six <laughs> little baby, baby legs. Right. And then all of a sudden it kind of warms up and then I can push it pretty hard and do relatively heavy weight. Yeah, but if, but if I try to go into it with just one or two warm up sets, it kills and it will hurt even more the next day. Right. So. All you guys are going to have slightly different problems, okay? And you're going to figure it out real, real quick, I promise. It just, it just doesn't take years to figure out. You're going to know what, what body parts need more warm-up than the other. And then Gary and I have given you tons of great examples on how to warm up without hurting yourself.